It was Edmund Hillary who said, it is not the mountain that we conquer, but ourselves. For best-selling author, spiritual teacher, and intuition pioneer Sonia Choquette, it took climbing several mountains, hiking through treacherous terrain and unforgiving weather conditions across Spain that allowed her to conquer her own fears, sadness, and unexplored emotions. Her trek across the Camino de Santiago was a journey of the soul, an experience in forgiveness, not just of others, but of self. Sonia documents this absolutely incredible adventure in her latest book, Walking Home, a pilgrimage from humbled to healed. I had the distinct pleasure to initially speak with Sonia back in May of 2013. Little did I know that she was about to embark on a journey that would change her life and touch ours in such an intimate and powerful way. This conversation post-pilgrimage was very different than the last. Sonia shares a very personal story of unimaginable loss, of pain, both physical and emotional, and a voyage to healing like none other. You know, as I was thinking about a name for our interview today, which I often like to do beforehand to sort of set a tone for the conversation, I couldn't think of anything more appropriate than this, Walking Home with Sonia Choquette. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and I know this is the name of your brand new book, which we'll be talking about today. I love it so much. But this also to me, Sonia, is the essence of what you've afforded your readers in bringing us this book. We get to walk home with you. This is how it touched me that I was on this journey with you, and I thank you for that. And I thank you so much for joining me today during what I know uh, for you is a hectic schedule always. So welcome. <laughs> well, I'm so grateful to be with you, and thank you so much. It was, it was, it, it's heartening to hear that you did feel as though you were walking with me, mm -hmm. because I really, once I decided to write the book, that was my intention. Mm -hmm. Well, I think you accomplished that and more. You know, you've authored, I believe, now 20 books. Is this the 20th? Mm -hmm. And many of them, maybe most of them bestsellers, including the coveted title you have of New York Times bestselling author. But now comes Walking Home, A Pilgrimage from Humble to Healed. And this, I think, is a very different book from you, different perhaps from any that you've written previously. Would you mind, Sonia, giving the audience a little snapshot of what inspired this book and this journey of yours? Well, you know, as a spiritual teacher and someone that's pretty much devoted myself to that my entire life, I have absolutely spent my life lifting people up, helping people tune into their intuition, seeing the best possible outcomes, showing people how to get there. It's been my passion, my purpose, my grand obsession. Yeah. And then yet a few years ago, in the course of a very short period of time, my older brother, who was in perfectly good health as far as I knew, died in his sleep. Mm. The stress caused my father to die six weeks later, and this is a man I've never known to be sick a day in his life. Wow, wow. And he died in a, a minute. He got up and said he didn't feel good, and then he was gone. And <sighs> the emotional impact on that sent me into such a downward spiral, and my husband, whom I had always a, a bit of a combative relationship with, just because I'm, I'm so pushing always for the, 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 the best and the mm -hmm. most, but he, he was not prepared to respond to me in a place of such great need, and so he left, and my marriage ended, hmm. and it was like a three-way train wreck. Certainly. And I found myself in a position where none of the tools I had advocated my whole life or had used to my own advantage helped me. So I got on my knees and prayed. And what came to me was the guidance that I was to walk away from everything and to walk the Camino de Santiago, which is a five, uh, five, over 500-mile five pilgrimage across Spain. Mm -hmm. And honest to God, it was such a shock because in trying <laughs> to deal with all my crisis, I was taking a kickboxing class and broke my kneecap. So it's like, are you kidding me? I'm barely recovering. I was in a wheelchair for months, and now I'm wow. supposed to do this? 
And yet I know enough from living a life that I always trusts with absolute faith that guidance I'm given in my heart. I said yes. You and said I yes. set off. <laughs> Camino de Santiago, you know, I didn't know that much, if really any, about it prior to uh, your journey and hearing about it. And uh, that's caused me to do a little bit of research. And obviously, you give the reader a purview like none other with the, the, the treacherous terrain. We're going to get into that. So God bless you. You know, I love the way you bring the reader in immediately on this incredible journey that you were about to embark on, walking this Camino. And I especially loved how you shared so intimately the trepidation and the, and the anxiety and the uncertainty that began almost immediately after you made the decision to go. I got the impression, Sonia, tell me if I'm right, that the real walk home began for you before you even left on this pilgrimage. It absolutely did, because what I finally did is I realized that my entire life in, in service to my spiritual purpose and my and what I felt was just such a duty to the people that I serve that whatever troubled me I thought I rose above or got beyond or put aside or just just took no offense to but in fact what I did is I stuffed all of that deep into my bones Mm -hmm. and didn't even realize it Mm -hmm. I didn't even realize it until it all came flying up I you know there was this time I saw a movie called don't look in the basement when I was a teenager just frightened the heck out of me and in a way that I, all these things I, you know, pushed down were like in the basement of my, my consciousness, deep in the deepest part of me. And, and I realized that, that maybe there was a part of me that thought I was beyond it or above it or around it, but maybe in truth I was just running away from it. Mm-hmm. And that's where I decided to stop. You looked in the basement, turned the light yeah. on. Wow. Turned the light on and went back and looked at all of it. Yeah, and I know there was a, yeah, mm-hmm. there was a lot to look at. Well, you know, there's so many wonderful, what well, I guess you'd call them esoteric messages that came out in this book. There were definitely synchronicities tied in with this pilgrimage for you. First, with the with the two individuals who separately brought the Camino to your attention way back in the beginning, I believe these were individuals in two different workshops you were leading. Six and or two so different months apart. continents. Two different continents. One was Australia, I think, and, and somewhere One else. One was here in <clears throat> Chicago, and and both times it was just a very momentary just a comment that got my attention. But because it was teaching, it's just like, hmm, I that's important. I should do that someday, but didn't even really know what it was Mm -hmm. that they were talking about. It wasn't foremost in my mind. And so they were already messengers. Yeah, absolutely. Way ahead of even beat going that were were preparing me for Mm -hmm. this huge transformational experience. Mm -hmm. And in retrospect, and as I look at it, what a complex tapestry of connection we all have to one another. Isn't that so? Mm -hmm. And even to to the heavens. I mean, nobody's on the outside. We're all woven together in some divine, mysterious way that is quite gorgeous. That's a great way of putting it. Gorgeous indeed. And it never ceases to amaze. I, I love the whole concept, if you want to call it that, the whole language, we'll say, of synchronicity. And I do believe it's a, a language that the universe speaks. And it's never uh, in short supply. And so this definitely, I, and I had a feeling you were going to weave those sorts of experiences and let us know about that. So so thank you for that. You know, the, I'll tell you, speaking of the universe and its language, though, it's amazingly supportive. Uh, I feel it can also be a harsh teacher, even a trickster at times, testing us, testing our strengths, illuminating our fears and making us face them. If you don't mind, I want to talk about one. I'm I'm, I'm chuckling only because of the way that you wrote it. Sonia, you just did such an amazing job at uh, even bringing laughter to us in this really tumultuous journey of yours. But one you had uh, on one occasion before you left on this pilgrimage, uh, having to do with facing your fear of what you call wild demon dogs. 
<laughs> I had to laugh. And, I, and I'll tell you, I'm, I'm chuckling. And, and it's not funny because it's, I know it was a very real fear for you. I have to tell you, my husband was attacked by a dog when he was a kid as a paper boy and had a chunk taken out of him and had to be sent to the emergency room. And to this day, he is absolutely mortified of dogs. So I understand. But the way you delivered it was just amazing. Can you give us a little background on that? <laughs> the demon well, dog? the thing is, when I was a kid, I was attacked by a dog. And so mm. one of the things I had heard about, you know, once I decided to go in the Camino, I quickly read whatever I could. And two books I read, Paulo Coelho and, and uh, Shirley MacLaine, both had these horrific experiences with attack dogs. And that was, so I was just like, great attack dogs and and I just was terrified to do the truth and so as I'm getting ready to to go I'm trying to get over my fear I remember my my girlfriend who's just like animal lover extraordinaire Mm -hmm. starts telling me you know she's gonna I said you have to get me some 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 kind of mace or some kind of spray to you know keep these attack dogs off of me and she's like, well, we're going to, she brings me a, a whole kind of folder full of, uh, you know, what to do and take, take the stick and here's what you do and don't look them in the eye. And I was ready to tackle her <laughs> with this. It's like, are you kidding me? Are you, are you got to be kidding me mm-hmm. that, that this is, I'm supposed to be interested in this right now. And it was just, I was so prepared to to just have to go, and, and I became so sick with anxiety about it. And then, you know, she brings me all this stuff. I get my mace. I get everything. And when I finally meet my attack dog, it's, it's pretty funny. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you I have put to a picture of my, my attack dog <laughs> in the book. I won't I won't give it away, but we'll just say it was a very big confrontation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna give it away. I'm not gonna give it away, but it was audience, when you get this book you'll know why we're chuckling. We'll just leave it there. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh boy. Well, you know, as your journey in walking the Camino progresses, you give the reader such a sense of adventure by describing so intricately day by day what you were going through, particularly the train and its difficulty that you had to push through. Sonia, I found it so amazing that each day brought a different type of outer terrain, but it also seemed to magically reflect how you were feeling inwardly on that particular day. That was stunning to me. Every single day Mm. of the entire pilgrimage. Every day, wow. Was such an extraordinary mirror to me the snowstorms the wind you know it, even the whole idea that i ended up walking the pilgrimage in the worst spring in a hundred years mm-hmm. Which, mm-hmm. i went in may and june it snowed and rained and it was freezing and i thought of course because these are the temperaments of the of the storms inside of me Mm-hmm. that I had not addressed or even witnessed or acknowledged. Yeah. And so every day, I mean, I had a lot of talks with the Camino, like, really? <laughs> then? And yet, yeah. as I walked, it was so interesting because while it was definitely an overwhelming physical challenge, it was the emotional burdens that made it so difficult Mm -hmm. and as I walked I began to divest myself of those burdens yeah and the walk got easier and easier and easier isn't that something and if I recall and again I don't want to give away too much but didn't you run into a fellow pilgrim who sort of intimated the same that she had as well made that statement that somehow the Camino and its magic is sort of mirroring your emotional burdens. And as you let it go, you know, it will be, it can become easier for you. I really believe, you know, and, and one of the reasons that I, I didn't go 
with any intention of writing about any of this. And obviously, mm. if you read the book, it's so, so personal. Yeah, I actually is. got talked into writing the book. I was going to ask you about that. Okay, so it really, so, okay. Yeah, I wasn't, this was such a personal, private, dark night of the soul, yearning for healing, shattered self. But what I what I recognized is that if you can just, be with your wounds and instead of judge them because we have a very judgy society you know even spiritually it's like oh don't be a victim and there's a big difference between being a victim or being stuck in victim mentality and just having the journey of the human experience which at times can be very wounding very wounding Mm -hmm. and we don't have a culture. We're a warrior culture. I was a spiritual warrior. Mm-hmm. I'm good. I'm fine. I'm. You don't get me down. But that doesn't. That that also creates a degree of of protection or defendedness, or we kind of push away our more our vulnerable sides. And when we do that, we deprive ourselves of the real connections we're yearning for. Mm-hmm. Well said. And that's what I, why ultimately what I'd hoped is that it's not that one has to go on a pilgrimage, but maybe just if we could just be a little bit more available to that our woundings don't make us weak or victim. Mm-hmm. That our emotional self can be resilient, but not unless we allow it the opportunity to be felt. Mm-hmm. And that was really, you know, what I learned as I went. That was my big aha. Mm-hmm. 